Many of us still vividly remember the great ice storm of 1998, 20 years ago. It left tens of thousands of people without power and heat for days, even weeks, in the middle of the winter in 1998. And as our Jack LeDuc reports, two Clarkson University professors who lived through the ice storm have spent the past two decades working on a new project that could keep the lights and heat on if a similar natural disaster were to ever strike the North Country again. The ice storm cocooned the area from Lake Champlain to Watertown for weeks, shutting down business and disturbing daily activity. It was January with months of winter still ahead. Without auxiliary power, businesses closed and farmers feared for the loss of cattle. Not being milked, cows could die. Without heat, 1,000 homes were evacuated. Stephen Farina, a Clarkson University professor, has made an award-winning documentary on the disaster with on-scene footage and sound. The film is based on his 2001 book, The Grid in the Village. The film also examines what could be done to alleviate electrical blackouts when a crucial grid crashes. A Clarkson researcher is developing mini grids that could throw a lifeline to an electrical blackout. There is a grid, an infrastructure created around a community that connects key elements of the community, say a pharmacy, a gas station, uh, gas, um, uh, you know, the universities in, in case of Potsdam, um, you know, any essential uh, element connects them in a grid that that grid can be disconnected from the vast power grid by a decision. We're now disconnecting. And that grid also has a source of power, whether it's some of the local uh, power dams, whatever it is, generators. Connecting mini grids could bring essential services where needed. Technically, it's possible, but costly. We know how to do it. Should we spend the money to do it? We meaning the community. Communities and utilities would be involved. Now, the state is interested in doing innovative work on mini grids. Clyde Rabidou was mayor of Plattsburgh during the ice storm. He likes the idea of mini grids. So if you do have an ice storm and the power from the St. Lawrence Seaway is not coming at you or coming up from downstate, you can rely on a generating system that keeps a mini grid together and you can have at least light maybe our pumps are working for water or milking pumps, we'll keep these facilities going. The mini grids that Clarkson is working on could have national significance. If developed, they could have aided hurricane devastated Puerto Rico, where some electricity is still out after months. A dam could feed electricity to a mini grid, sending it to prime facilities, a gas station, a pharmacy, a police station, allowing a community to get by. Thousands of upstate New York and Quebec families struggled through the calamity. Everybody was in it together. You were without power, so were 20,000 other people right around us and 100,000 more in the region. You didn't have it any worse than anybody else, but you helped your neighbor and your neighbor helped you. And Mayor Rabidou said that burying power lines underground could prevent trees from falling and bringing down lines, cutting off power. It's expensive to bury the lines. It's a lot cheaper to string them up on telephone poles. So how many times do we have to learn the lesson about burying the lines? I don't have that answer. The good news is that mini grids could be available in a couple of years. But as filmmaker Stephen Farina said, just how much are we willing to pay for them? Farina also added that mini grids are pointing the way to assist our aging grids whenever a disaster strikes. For Mountain Lake Journal, I'm Jack LeDuc in Saranac Lake.